Thank you for purchasing the Guterman Aquascan 610 Leak Correlator. The first step when unboxing your new equipment is to fully charge the processor. On the upper right hand side of the processor is the charging port. This unit is weather resistant and powered via the red charging cable and the power adapter included in the kit. There is a notch charging port on the processor that must be carefully screwed into the charging cable. Do not force the charger into the processor as it may break the pins if not aligned properly. Please ensure that the unit is fully charged prior to use. The Aquascan 610 kit comes with two sensors, sensor A and B. Remove the dust cap from the sensor's charging port on the top of each sensor. The sensors are also powered via a charge using the included charging cable and adapter. While charging, the sensors will remain in a blinking red state. When fully charged, the red light will go off indicating that the charge is complete and the sensors are ready for use. All of the components are resistant to overcharging and will remain connected to the charger indefinitely with no harm done to the equipment. The sensors require the connection of an antenna and antenna extensions included in your kit. The sensors are marked by a red A and a yellow B. The antennas are also marked with a red A and a yellow B. Once all the components are fully charged, sensors A and B are deployed magnetically on listening points on either side of the suspected leak position. These points are typically in-line valves or hydrants located on the water main. Correlation site preparation is very important prior to deploying the sensors. It is critical the sensors are positioned in the location that has the least interference and the clearest leak noise. If the sensors will be lowered into a valve box chamber, although the sensors are water resistant, it is always recommended to clean the chamber free from water or debris. Getting a complete magnetic connection to the valve operating nut is important, and by cleaning the valve box, the operator can visually confirm the sensor is placed correctly. The sensors are powered on by pressing the power button and holding for a second or two. When powering up the sensors, there are two power settings available for use. The first setting is a steady red light. This setting is when you are doing leak detection on all pipe material except plastic. The second setting is a blinking red light and this setting is for doing leak detection on all plastic material pipes. This setting is achieved by pressing the steady red button again for a second or two. This will change the steady red light to a blinking red light. When using either settings, please ensure that both sensors are on the set power setting. When lowering the sensor down into a valve box, it is always recommended a cable other than the extended antenna is used to prevent damage to the antenna. Always make sure to turn the sensor on prior to lowering it down into the valve box. You can confirm the power is on by looking for a solid red light on top of the sensor. Anytime the sensor is going to be lowered below surface level, an extended antenna is needed to get the signal out of the valve box. After lowering the sensor down into the valve box, it is best practice to raise the sensor back up to street level and clean off any dirt or debris that may prevent the sensor from hearing the leak noise accurately. The distance between the two points is measured. It is always recommended to utilize a measuring wheel to get an accurate measurement between sensors A and B. Remember that the distance measured is actual pipe distance as it is underground. The Aquascan 610 Leak Noise Correlator has radio communication with two sensors for real-time correlation. After completing the distance measurement, repeat the same steps for sensor B. Make sure to lower the sensor by something other than the antenna and to confirm the sensor is attached well to the listening site magnetically. The Aquascan 610 processor is turned on by pressing and holding the power button for two or three seconds. The screen will activate and open to the main operation screen. All of the functions are activated by the push buttons. For each correlation, the user must first input the pipe material, diameter, and length of pipe between sensors. The input of this data is done by selecting the pipe button. The first of the three boxes are active as indicated by the bold border. Use the up and down buttons to select the appropriate material. Press the check button to set your selection and move the bold border to the next box. Once again, Scroll using the up and down buttons to select the pipe diameter. Press the selection 
and advance the bold border to the pipe length box. Set the pipe length box by using the up and down buttons to select the number and the check button to advance from thousands to hundreds to tenths to ones. If you are trying to find a leak with mixed pipe types, select the multiple material option. Once the pipe material, diameter, and length are set, the correlation button to advance back to the main correlation screen. You are now ready to start the correlation. Press the correlation button and the processor will begin correlation. The AquaScan 610's display gives you numerous points of data that allow the user to determine if they have identified and pinpointed a leak. The first is the quality percentage number found in the upper right corner of the screen. This is a percentage from 0 to 100. The higher the percentage number, the more confident the user can be in knowing that they have identified and pinpointed a leak. Although there is no set number that represents the presence of a leak or not, the operator must use judgment in order to make the final decision to mark the leak. The main graph also provides valuable information to the operator about the accuracy and potential for a leak. A leak will provide a clear peak on the graph. The processor's quality percentage number will rise in relation to the presence of a well-defined peak. The presence of the leak from sensor A will be indicated by the bold number under the graphs A on the left. The distance of the leak from sensor B will be indicated by the bold number under graphs B on the right side. The smaller number under A and B indicates the position of the cursor on the graph. This cursor can be moved to the left or to the right using the up and down buttons when doing so. The corresponding distance numbers under A and B will charge accordingly. This cursor function allows the user to measure the distance from A and B in the case of a secondary high peak appearing on the graph, which may indicate the existence of a second leak. Also note that any time if you can correlate multiple leaks with the same relative distance, paired with a correlation quality above 80% is a good result. After confirming the location of the leak, it is always best practice to confirm the leak location with an acoustic listening device like a ground microphone prior to excavation.